I will just give you a few examples of comparing the Quran with the modern science, and then I'll throw the floor open for the question and session, which is much more enjoyable than a normal talk. In the field of astronomy, there were a group of scientists who described how did our universe come into existence. And they called it the Big Bang. And the scientists, they told us that initially there was one primary nebula. Then there was a secondary separation, a Big Bang, which gave rise to galaxies, the stars, the planets, and the Earth on which we live. This what the scientists discovered about 45, 50 years back in 1970s is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says that Avalam yara kafaru. Do not the unbelievers see Anna samawati that the heavens and the earth were joined together kan that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This Big Bang, what the scientists discovered hardly 50 years back, is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago. Previously, we did not know what was the shape of the earth. It was in 1577 when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth, he discovered and he proved that the earth is spherical. What we came to know recently, hardly 450 years back, is mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 30. Which says, Wal ard baad azalika dahaha. And thereafter, we have made the earth egg shaped. The Arabic word dahaha, one of its meanings in expanse. The other meaning is derived from the Arabic word dhuya, which means an egg. And it doesn't refer to a normal egg, it specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich. And if we analyze the egg of an ostrich, it's not completely round like a ball, it is flattened from the pole. It is geospherical in shape. Imagine the Quran mentions 1400 years ago that the shape of the earth is geospherical. And when I was in school, I had learned, I passed my school in 1982, in the subject of science, I had learned that the sun, though it revolved, it did not rotate about its own axis. It was stationary. But when I read a verse of the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, says that Huwa lazi layl wa nahara. It's Allah who has created the night and the day. Wa shamsa wal kamar. The sun and the moon. Kullun fi falki yasbuhun. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. The Arabic word yasbuhun describes the motion of a moving body, saying that the sun and the moon, besides revolving, also rotates about its own axis. And today, after science is advanced, we have come to know that if we have the image of the sun on a tabletop, the sun has got black spots. And these black spots take about 25 days to complete one rotation, indicating that the sun takes about 25 days to complete one rotation. Imagine what I read in school. Today, science says that it is wrong. And the Quran mentions 1400 years ago that the sun rotates about its own axis. There may be many skeptics who will say, it's nothing great that the Quran speaks about astronomy since the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. I do agree that the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy, but I would like to correct them that it was centuries after the Quran was revealed that the Arabs became advanced in the field of astronomy. So it's not from the Quran that the Arabs learned about astronomy, but it is the vice versa. So it is not that the... Uh, that the Quran has picked up from the Arabs, but it is the Arabs who learned from the Quran. And the Quran speaks about various subjects of science. What we learn in school about the water cycle, it was first propounded by Sir Bernard Palissy 
In 1580, what we learn in school, that the water, water evaporates from the sky, forms into clouds, moves into interior, it falls down as rain. Previously, we did not know about the water cycle. And the Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail, in several places. In Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 29. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number, verse number 24. The Quran speaks of water cycle in Surah Hijr, chapter number 15, verse 22. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse 48. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse 57. Allah says in the Quran, in several verses, in Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 48 and 49. Allah says in Surah Ghashia, chapter 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 8 and 9. In Surah Mul, chapter number 67, verse number 30. Allah says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. You can keep on quoting only references in the Quran which speaks about the water cycle in great detail. The Quran speaks about biology. In Surah Luqman, Allah says in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30, that وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّا شَيْنَ أَفْلَا يُمِنُونَ We have created every living thing from water. Will you not believe? In the field of botany, we did not know previously that even the plants are sexes, male and female. Quran says this more than 40 years ago in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse 53, that we have created the plants as pairs, male and female. Quran says in Surah Raj, chapter number 13, verse number 3, that we have created the fruits in pairs. Quran says in Surah Yasin, chapter number 33, verse number 36, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything in pairs, the things you know and things you don't know. And today science tells us that things such as even electricity are in pairs, negative and positive. Quran speaks about geology, about medicine, about embryology. Time will not permit me to speak about everything. I'll just give two more scientific facts before we throw the floor open for the question answer session. The Quran says in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4, that when the unbelievers say, how will Almighty God be able to reconstruct our bones after we have died and we have been buried and our bones have been disintegrated, Allah says, tell them, Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, but he can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of the finger. What does the Quran mean by saying Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, he can even reconstruct in perfect order the tips of the finger. It's, it was Sir Francis Colt in 1880 who discovered the fingerprinting method. And no two fingerprints, even in a million people, are identical. And today the police, the CID, the CBI, these, they are using fingerprinting method to identify the criminal. Imagine the Quran mentions 1400 years ago that Almighty God can not only reconstruct the bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tip of your finger. I'll give you a last example. Prophet Thakur Dakashan hailed from Thailand and did and spent a great deal of time in doing research of pain receptors. Previously, we doctors, we thought only the brain was responsible for the feeling of pain. And now we have come to know that there are certain receptors in the skin known as pain receptors which are also responsible for the feeling of pain. That is the reason when a patient of burn injury comes, the doctor takes a pin and pricks it in the area of burn. If the patient feels pain, the doctor is happy. It's a superficial burn. The pain receptors are intact. If the patient does not feel pain, the doctor is sad. It's a deep burn. The pain receptors have been destroyed. There is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 56, which says, As to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. The Quran says, 
as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain, indicating there is something in the skin which is responsible for the feeling of pain, which the doctors call as pain receptors. Prophet Takara Takashan was so impressed that the Quran mentioned this 1400 years ago that in the ninth medical conference in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, in the conference itself, he proclaimed the Shahada and said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. Wa akhru dawana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Reminders of the Jal and his time. So perhaps from that perspective, the time is near. The Jews are waiting for the Messiah to come. They believe the ancient Jesus, the real Jesus, he was an imposter, he was a false messiah. This is in their Torah now, now which they have played around with. So they're still waiting for the messiah. But they say the messiah will not come out until the temple of Solomon is rebuilt. They have to